This may come as a bit of a surprise, but I see far too many people hitting it in tents six to seven times a week, crushing it, going all out every single time. This could actually be hindering your results. It's a phenomenon known as overtraining, and yes, it's real. What is going on guys? Adam Scott here from Adam Scott Fit. Welcome back to another video. And this video is gonna be on overtraining because it's ever more prevalent now. When everyone's at home, you haven't got that much to do, well, as much as usual, and you can actually train more. More is not always best, we'll get into that a bit later, but a small amount of exercise, I don't mean as small as in one day a week, I mean not completely crushing it day in, day out, week after week after week, is a mild stress on the body, a stress the body can make an adaptation to, and it's the body's hormetic response. The first thing to remember before I get really scientific, I am not a doctor, and this should not be taken as medical advice, and if you have any medical conditions, you should consult a doctor before taking up any new program or any advice that I share in this video. So, just to play off my last video, I wanted to fold in quite nicely, I focused on the immune system and how exercise impacts the immune system. Now I'm gonna take it a bit further and how it impacts the whole body, how too much exercise specifically can impact the entire body. In both men and women, sex hormones are governed by the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus sends signals to the pituitary and gonads, for example, ovaries and testes. The hypothalamus works closely with the adrenal glands which secrete cortisol, adrenaline, and epinephrine. There is a feedback loop here with the HPA axis, interaction between the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal glands, and the HPG axis, interaction between the hypothalamus, pituitary, and gonads. If the hypothalamus detects excess stress, it shuts down our production of sex hormones. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna define overtraining as someone that trains six to seven times a week, goes hard, maxes out every time, week in, week out, for months and months on end, without adequate recovery procedures in place. Lots of things can set the HPA, HPG axis out of whack, but for this video, we're gonna focus on overtraining. When the HPA and HPG are out of whack, it can actually downregulate the thyroid hormone, and this can lead to a decrease in metabolic activity. This is one of the main reasons you see people that train intensely all the time, but can't seem to get in shape. They actually even store more body fat. <laughs> what a waste of time. It can disrupt women's menstrual cycles and can also lower the anabolic hormone testosterone in men. Overtraining can also cause mental stress and inflammation in the joint. Everyone deals with stress a bit differently, so what looks like overtraining for someone like me can be different for you and different for the next person. If all factors in your life were consistent, you had no other stress from anywhere else, Yoga. then training six to seven times a week really intense probably wouldn't be an issue, but that's not the case, is it? <laughs> not for anyone that's human, we have other stresses that affect our stress levels, um, which can have an impact on our training as well. So how do you know you're overtraining? Experiencing one to two sessions of decreased performance is not always a sign of overtraining. It could be other lifestyle factors affecting the way you recover. Undertraining is also a very real thing too. And if you undertrain, you will not get results. Honestly, you will not get results no matter what. So you need to make sure you're progressively overloading the muscles. That pain's what's gonna save your life. Your cells remember where it hurts and that's where they get strong. But at the same time, the perfect sweet spot is somewhere between undertraining and overtraining, like bang in the middle. If you're a newbie and you're first starting out training, why would you start with five to six times a week? You just shouldn't. First of all, it's an overload in the sense it might be hard for you to actually stick to. To keep your times consistent. Because it's quite a lot of training, believe me. And secondly, you're probably not gonna be able to recover as efficiently as if you start with three sessions. The DOMs are gonna be lethal and they may even be off-putting. And you need to have that time 
to create the adaptations, to find a new baseline, a new homeostasis, and then build on that. So if you start with three times a week and you build it up to five or six, that's completely fine. But as a newbie, don't go straight into the deep end. Don't go five to six times. So what are my top recovery methods to avoid reaching overtraining? I have a few. So first one, we'll start with sleep. So sleep is vital. Some professional athletes, it's actually rumored that Floyd Mayweather slept, well, sleeps, slept, sleeps for 12 hours a night in order to recover. I've heard a lot of rumors about really high performing athletes sleeping for like between 10 and 12 hours a night. I'm not saying aim for that amount, that's unrealistic. Aim for seven to nine hours every single night of deep, high quality sleep. The next one, make sure you're getting proper nutrition. Proper nutrition is vital. You need to make sure you're not under eating, if you're under eating, you're not going to have enough calories, you're not going to have the right macronutrients and micronutrients you need to recover from training, to come back stronger each time. The next one, supplements. If you've nailed, if you've completely nailed nutrition, you want to focus on adding some supplements. You can add some creatine, some protein powder, some dextrin powder or dextrose powder. You can add some HMB, you can add some beta amylin, you can add some vitamin C, some zinc. There's so many supplements to choose from that can help you recover from your workouts. The next one, take a deload week. A deload week could look like something with, say, 40 to 50% of the volume of your normal training schedule. Say if you usually do 20 sets per week, you can cut it down to, say, 8 so 12 it's up to you play around with it decrease the volume you don't have to decrease the weight but you can have like a high rep week or something like that and the last one you can actually take a week out altogether of training it's not something i'd particularly advise especially if you're doing really well but if you don't feel well or you feel like your sleep is being taxed then definitely do take a week out so if you enjoyed this video click the thumbs up button if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and if you haven't yet hit the bell notification, hit that too. And be sure to share this with any friends, family that you feel may be interested. Comment below if you have any questions. And until the next video, keep pushing those limits.